computer. Good evening, guys. I like to start every single one of my Zooms by asking how your day's been. So if we can familiarise ourselves with the chat box, um, one, being absolute terrible, you may have corona, joke. Ten, being absolutely <laughs> fantastic and you've had the best day. Drop in chat box, guys. One to ten, how your days have been. Hundred. Simi, I know why yours is a hundred. Because you grew a nice account today. Travis is... Travis got corona. Travis is... Don't worry, Trav. I'll sort you out tomorrow. Teething. Baby spoil. There's minus one. <laughs> I wish you better, Des. I wish you better. I wish you better. Dennis, 100. Wow. Dennis, did you catch a bit of gold today? Nice. Nice. Okay. Simon, 10. That's because you're on holiday, innit? I know everything. I know everything. All right, let's get started. I'll go a bit quiet if we move places in the building it is because the cleaner has got a, a hoover out and I don't want background noise okay so guys today we are going to talk to you tell me the lottery now then all right the number two and eight is going to come up in the lottery on Friday that's I didn't tell you. All right, back to business. All right, guys, we wanted to do a Zoom because with Corona, there's a lot of news. Um, there's a lot of news on the economy. Now, traders need to realise that there's not just the Forex factory. There's not just news drops that affect the economy. Everything that goes on between business, going to the government, through everything, even to you purchasing things on a day-to-day -day basis, that contributes to the economy. And that also affects every single currency. So not only is trading 80% mindset, okay, you also need to know the skill to trade, but you also must learn the economy. Okay, now you don't have to go into as much detail as I'm going to go into today, but just to give you a general oversight on how mm -hmm. things can affect the market. So then when you are in a situation like the coronavirus, where economies are on lockdown, countries are on lockdown, you can start to see how it impacts indices, how it impacts currencies. And that, if you master the art of that, along with the skill that you've learned and along with having a strong mindset, the you do not become a victim of the charts okay the, the charts are there and they're running from you because you will start to master the charts so what i want to show you on the screen is if everybody can see on the screen let's go slide so it's bigger for you guys okay so on the screen you can see an equation now don't worry Again, you do not have to be good at maths. I am not good at maths, okay? Yes, it looks like an algebra equation. It is not. This equation measures the GDP of the economy, okay? Gross domestic product, okay? You do not need to know gross domestic product, but what you do need to know is that GDP is the measurement of an economy. And the way that they measure it is with this equation here highlighted in black. C plus I plus G plus X minus M. I would suggest that you take a screenshot of this page, you write this equation down. This is very, very important. And what I'm going to speak about next, and two of my amazing traders are going to come on and speak to you about in more detail, this is going to be the forefront of it all. So if you haven't, make sure that you screenshot this C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Now, what they mean is on the screen. So C is consumption. Okay. Consumption is the buying of goods and services. So everything that you buy goods and service wise 
equals to the consumption of an economy. I stands for investment, okay? So any type of investment that goes into the economy would fall under the I bracket. G is government spending, any kind of government spending, schooling, NHS, that would go under government spending, and then exports and imports, X minus M. You want there to, you want to be in profit with your exports and imports, okay? So, this is the most important equation of macroeconomics of each economy. Now, what I want to show you is how briefly that it relates. Now, if you look, I'm going to go on to the Forex factory, but not only will news drops that are scheduled, what I'm going to go through in Forex factory, unscheduled news drops like the coronavirus, like elections, things like that, um, any votes and any speeches every time Trump speaks, things like that, that will affect it. So don't solely look at Forex Factory. You also need to be keeping up to date with the new stuff. Bye, guys. See you later. You need to also be keeping up to date with the new stuff. Okay. Now, I've highlighted a few important things, and I want to go through them with you. Okay. Let me come up with this. Okay, so when you're on Forex Factory, you'll see that a lot of tra traders will tell you to mainly focus on the red folders. Okay, as you can see up the top here, GDP. Okay, now guys, like I said, you don't necessarily need to know what everything means. You just need to know what impact it has on the economy. Okay, so if we take it back, I'm just trying to juggle the chat box, bear with me. If we take this back to here, okay, everything that you're going to see today is going to affect one of these equations. Now, if GDP in a in a comp in a um, economy is rising, okay, what do you think that is going to have an impact on the currency? What do you think is going to happen if GDP is rising? Because if GDP is rising, that means that all of these are rising. That means that the economy is getting stronger. Okay? So if the GDP is rising, the economy is getting stronger, what do you think is going to happen to the currency? Somebody put in the chat box, do you think the currency is going to increase or decrease? If the economy is getting stronger, if the economy is rising, exactly okay so if gd so if all of these news drops affect this equation you need to master this equation so everything will fall into one of these brackets that being said um if if interest rates okay interest rates have been cut what do you think that's going to happen with investment okay so if interest rates are lower are people likely to borrow Yes or no? Put in the chat box. If interest, if interest rates are lower, are, in, are people more likely to borrow? Yes, they are. So that means that, in, that, that means that it will affect the eye of this equation. Okay? Government spending. We've just had the budget announcements. Okay? If they decide to spend more billions of pounds on NHS, what do you think is going to happen to government spending? It's going to increase, affecting GDP. If GDP rises then the currency should rise with it, okay? So anything that you hear economy-wise will fall into these brackets, okay? So if we go back onto Forex Factory and you look at the news drops, now remember, the most high-impacting news drops are red folders. So as you can see here, GDP was one of the first ones, okay? You do not necessarily need to know exactly what they mean, but it's all there in black and white. Gross domestic product, okay, it even tells you that the actual is greater than the forecast. So again, that's just meaning if it increases, it is better for the currency. Okay, it gives you a little bit of detail there. But there's a diff I want to show you because you'll notice now this is the key thing. I'm teaching you in terms of GDP, gross domestic product. Um, I've also shown you some of the other things to highlight, which is on Forex Factory. CPI, Consumer Price Index, that is the measurement of inflation. Okay, so is RPI. There's a difference between the two. A couple of open mics. Thank you for telling me that. Thank you. 
um, you all perfect. Um, is that all good? Can you tell me if the mics are all good now, please? Thank you. Okay. So, CPI and RPI are measurements of inflation. There's a difference between the two, okay? And the difference is, is that we mainly use CPI. Uh, let me show you why. But this is the measurement of inflation. So, they met the inflation is the cost of living, okay? So, if inflation goes up, that means that the cost of living goes up in comparison to people's wages. That means that the cost of living becomes more expensive. Okay, so when you see on Forex Factory that CPI um, rates are coming out, RPI rates are coming out, then that is very important to the currency and the economy. GDP, as we discussed, is the whole equation, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Okay, cool. Guys, we're just moving. Hope there's a clean the office. Better? Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so gross domestic product. Okay, bro, gross domestic product is this equation here. Okay, again, you'll see that on Forex Factory and then interest rates. I'm just highlighting a few things on Forex Factory that are really important and will affect this equation. So if we go through to this now. Okay, so you'll see that here, CPI, if we click on it, remember, that's consumer price index. That is the change in price of goods and services purchased by consumers. Okay. So the difference between CPI and RPI is RPI is relative price index and CPI is consumer price index. Now, the difference is, is that we normally use RPI um, index because what that is, is a test of goods um, in, a, in a kind of test bracket. So it's a certain amount of goods in this test bracket that they test regularly to see if the price increases, whereas CPI gives you the overall price of everything, okay? So RPI, we use in the UK mainly because it's a test of certain products and services that we test regularly to keep track on inflation, whereas CPI is the overall. Now, you'll see news drops from both, okay? But I'm just highlighting to you that RPI is more common in the UK, okay so you'll see here change in price of services produced by the custom consumers okay this is extremely relative to inflation data okay so it gives you it gives you a nice little synopsis of everything but again all you need to know is that cpi measures inflation and inflation will then in turn affect this part of the consumption okay so it will affect c because if cost of living goes up then what do you think is going to happen to consumption? People spending money, people buying things. It's going to go down, okay? If the cost of living goes up, it becomes more expensive, then people are going to have less money to go to Zara's and buy a lovely new dress, or if you're in Ben's case, buy a brand new pair of Yeezys. Thank you for the charger. Okay. Let's go through some more examples. Um, monetary policy meetings. Guys, again, that is just the same way that the Bank of England have meetings. Different countries have different meetings. These are very important, and these will have an effect on the economy. Okay? PMI. PMI doesn't tend to have a, um, a direct massive spike of an effect but it can do over time. Purchasing managers index, again, that's not really one of the most important ones. That's why I've not highlighted it on the PowerPoint. As you can see here, CPI. Um, da, da, da. Where's some of the others? 
one I want to show you further down. GDP, as you can see, that's the C plus I plus G plus X minus M, okay, USD, USD. Now, the key thing to notice about GDP, guys, it's given quarterly. It's given quarterly, okay? So, to measure an economy, so to measure GDP is this equation here. Okay. This is your equation here. Okay. Now, if GDP is increasing, then obviously the economy is growing stronger. But what is the opposite? What is the keyword I'm looking for if the GDP in the economy is going down? A word that's been chucked around in every single currency, every single news, everything in the late, um, lately, in the last two weeks. One key word I'm looking for in the chat box. When GDP, when the economy is going down, a word, what word am I looking for? Recession. Perfect. Okay, so when GDP is in negative, a lot of people say that we're in recession. That's true only if we've had two consecutive measurements of GDP growth. A recession happens in a country, two consecutive measurements of GDP growth. So that's two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. So you see where it says here, GDP quarterly. If two of them come out minus, then you can officially declare that we are in a recession. Okay, so that's another little tip for you. A recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Um, I wanted to show you an example of where they name it different. GDP here, you can see, same press conference. Unemployment, employment also affects it. Um, PMI again, purchasing managing index, retail sales again, that'll affect the consumption, um, inflation expectations, RBI, cash rate. Right, so RBI and cash rate. Okay, now to us, that is our bank, um, that is our Bank of England. So, just to highlight that, and just so you can see. You can see that it's the Reserve Bank of Australia. So, guys, it's just names. So, sometimes it might throw you, but it's just names slightly different for different countries and different economies. Okay, so it's the same thing, the RBA Reserve Bank. So, this is when they'll release if interest rates have been cut and things like that. Again, all affecting this equation. Okay, all affecting this equation. And these are the most important ones. Again, if you want to screenshot this, these are the most important ones that you're going to see the impact um, on the economy and currencies. Okay, so if you want to take a screenshot of this, then these are the most important ones that you'll see featured on forex factory please be aware that they um may differ in name for different countries okay so just to wrap up um just to wrap up about gdp and the overall economy and just to give you an insight on on the overall economy um just to make it clear if gdp increases it will affect the currency and in turn the currency should rise if GDP decreases, then in turn, the value of the currency should decrease. Okay, so this is why I said all of these little segments are important because it measures the overall GDP, meaning if GDP goes up, currency goes up. If GDP goes down, currency goes down. Okay, and there's, there's many reasons for this as well, because if you think about it, okay, and another thing that affects um, currencies is investment. OK, so investment. So when you're looking at kind of looking at in indices and even currencies as well, companies are going to want to invest in a strong GDP economy. OK, they're not going to put, want to put their money in an economy that's in recession. Investors are going to want to put their money 
into economies that have strong GDP. If they're investing more money into that country, into that currency, then that will in return make the currency stronger too. Okay, so think of the investors as well and interest rates. Okay, this will have a correlation effect on interest rates as well. Okay, it, it, will, it could in return cause a cut in interest rates or an increase in interest rates. Okay, now I could go into so much detail about GDP, um, even in terms of a, an, an economy being too strong, how that could affect it. But at the moment and in current times, um, I think we should just kind of end the, the global economy stuff here. I'm going to bring on the boys to talk about the next segment. But if anybody's got any questions and you want to go through this in more detail, where we go into a strong economy rather than a weak, because a lot of this is focused on a weak economy because of the um, pandemic that's approaching. But yeah, in, in, if anybody wants to go through more stuff, we want a part two, we'll be more than happy to do that. And we can go into very more detail of these examples. But I just want to stress that if you learn this equation and you learn what affects these these four things, the C plus I, the plus um, the G and exports and imports, everything that you hear will affect one of these. If one of these is going up and, and everything's going up, GDP is going up, currency gets stronger, GDP is going down, currency gets weaker. Okay. Whew. I'm sweating in this office. Give me a drink. I need a drink. Thanks, guys. <laughs> the aircon has just gone off. Okay. Now, I'm going to introduce both of these people to you guys um, because they're just going to come on straight after each other. Um, these are two traders that um, I've worked with very closely over the last few weeks. Um, and because of the current situation that's approaching us in terms of the economy, we've had to really adapt um, our structure on the trading floor. So we've had to really adapt it in terms of all of this sometimes overrules technical analysis. Okay, so you could do all the technical analysis in the world, but if you're not up to date on this part in particular, it could literally knock it out of the waters, okay? So we've really had to adapt this. And, and between the three of us, we, we've took the trading floor on one of, one of, our, one of our best uh, cup, well, our best week so far. And, and this is just through implementing this. And I just really want to chuck it back to these two guys because their absolute skill amazes me, inspires me every single day. And I've even helped grow my own personal accounts. Thank you. But guys, they're going to they're gonna come on board. They're going to share their value. So all I want to say is, if you didn't have a pen and paper for Marbit, then you better go and get a pen and paper now because what they're going to show you is give you clean examples of exactly what I've just gone in through. They're experts in the game. So make sure you're listening because they are going to drop pure fire and pure nuggets. Guys, I can't thank you enough for coming on this Zoom. You're absolutely amazing. Um, I'm going to welcome on both Pemi and Ben, but Pemi is going to speak first. So can we drop some ones, some fire, some love in the chat box for the boys, please. Um, and Pemi, I believe you should be able to unmute yourself, mate. So if you can't, just holler at me. Um, but take it away, my friend. Yeah, I've unmuted. I just, um, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Let me make you host it then um, for your stuff. Two seconds, mate. Yeah, no problem. Uh, perfect. Perfect, Pem, you should now be host. Brilliant. So I'm just going to get my stuff ready. Yeah, no okay, just so, just so I check with my mic. Right? If everyone could just drop a two in the chat, if you can hear me properly, and then I'll just um, get started. Brilliant, loads of tears. Okay, I'll get straight into it. Um, so I'm just literally going to just touch on quickly about like, the importance of this type of analysis. Uh, I'm just going to push quickly go into trading economics and then get straight into it. So... I think I'll speak for everyone where obviously the, um, the condition of the market is, is probably like new territory for all of us. I think because I've, I've probably been trading for less than a year now. Uh, probably most of the academies been, are probably trading for less than a year. So this is probably the first time we've seen market conditions like that. So it's, um, it's really volatile at the moment. I'm not going to lie. Like if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you, the, the market's going to shaft you. And, um, you know, 
I, I speak for the uh, like the trading floor when you know I think it was like a couple of weeks ago there was a few trades where we didn't really take in, take on board this type of analysis and it we 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 were made to pay for it. So you know over the last I'll say a few weeks I've started to take this a lot seriously and it's really helped. You know, at is I've used it as an extra confirmation. Uh, for any trades that I want to put on either on my personal account or on the trading floor. Um, basically, the fundamental analysis for me, I feel that it's it's what really drives the market. So if we, we if we could take, for example, uh, the interest rate cuts that the, the Federal Reserve, so if anyone's unsure what the Federal Reserve is, it is the central bank of the United States. So I'm just going to quickly just share my screen before I continue. Uh, where is it? Okay. So if everyone can share if everyone can see my screen, can you just drop a, a three just so I know everyone's everyone's cool. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Yeah. So as I was saying before, yeah, the Fed's um, the Federal Reserve is the central bank of uh, the United States. Um, they recently dropped uh, their interest rate to about I think it was like zero. So what that what that typically happens is what they what they, why they do that is they want to basically encourage um, people to start borrowing and obviously like borrowing credit so that they can use it to buy goods. So if it, whether they want to you know buy a car or buy a house, you know. They'll borrow. Uh, obviously, they'll ask the, the the central bank for money, and then they pay less interest on that. So that's how it, it can try and stimulate the economy. What that ha what causes what causes that what tends to happen after they um, cut those sort of interest rates is is that you see a spike in the market. So typically, the currency tends to go down. Um, the reason, obviously, and obviously, like if you do too much of it, it can cause uh, the, the 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 currency to actually lose it, lose its value. Um, I feel, I don't know if Brian remembers, we was actually in a trade, I think it was like GBP USD, and I think we was in a sell for that. And then, and obviously like they had done a cut and then we was on the, we was on the wrong end of that. And we was just sitting there thinking, how, how did this happen? And obviously like, obviously when you journal your, your, when you journal your losses and then you can actually figure out, and then obviously like you can see if it was, it's just plain to see. So. I think that's what really started my, you know, my interest into finding out, okay, what's really going on in the world? What's what's making price do what it's doing at the moment? Why is it so volatile? So why why is um, certain stocks going down? Why are certain, you know, businesses like, you know, just starting to, you know, basically piss themselves <laughs> because of the way the market is going? So that was that's my like my main reason. I want you with this type of analysis, you're gonna start to see the market. You're gonna start to see the bigger picture. You know, you're, you're gonna start to see, okay. You know, this is how people react. You know, uh, in in these times of crisis. So I just want to quickly just so uh, you know jump in into one of the sources that I use um, on a day to day basis. So if you're if you've got a pen and paper, make sure you jot this down. This is called this website is called Trading Economics. So just like Forex Factory, they you know they will give you an update on certain news drop. But I feel the good thing about Trading Economics is that they go into a bit more detail. So as well as you know, explaining what news, each news drops mean and what, obviously what's the predicted forecast. If you go into this news section, and if you click on markets, they'll give you like a, a, a summary of like basically the different stocks, the different currencies that have been affected. So if, you, if we start on the Wall Street, on Wall Street, suffers its worst day since 1987. So it's basically just giving an update of what's been happening today. So Monday was a massive sold off, I think, if anyone was watching Bloomberg, I think it was this afternoon, they said that there was a circuit breaker. So it's basically, it's a mechanism in the market to basically stop um, prices dropping below a certain point. Um, that I think that was the second time it happened like in the past week or so. So it basically just gives you an update of what's going on, what the, uh, the central banks are trying to do to try and, you know, mitigate the situation. So, it, and, I, and I, what I tend to do is it's like every morning I'll come into the office I'll literally just look at all of this, try and jot down any important information so that I can have an understanding of um, where certain price, what, um, le what level certain price, um, currencies are going to be out. Are they, uh, are they bullish at the moment? Are they bearish? You know, and it helps me, you know, have, add an extra confirmation to my trade. And it, you know, it gives me, 
you know, a lot more clarity going into these trades. You know, I don't know if um, I speak, I've, I've probably done this, you know, when I first started, you know, I would go into a lot of trades with not a lot of confidence thinking, okay, I'm going to put this buy, I'm going to put this sell, but I don't really know, you know, what direction this is going to go. You know, by, by looking at, you know, just having a quick summary on the different stocks and the different currencies, you know, you get an idea of like, okay, what, what um, kind of state these, um, you know, these currency pairs, these some um, different stocks, if anyone, you know, trades DAX or, you know, um, trades US 30, you get to, you get an idea of, of like where exactly they are in the market. And, you know, it, it you know, it gives you a better, um, it gives you more confidence, you know, going into these trades, whether you're going to buy or sell them. Um, so yeah, I just literally just jot these down and, you know, I just keep them in the back of my mind. So anytime if I come across like a certain GBB pair or a Euro pair, um, you know, it just it just helps me, you know, make a better decision. So if we look for an example, so I think let's take uh, the euro, for example, now. So if off the top of their head, if anyone could um, answer this question, it, does anyone think that in its current state at the moment, is the euro quite strong or is it weak? Does anyone have an idea? Any opinions on it? Let's see. I know Brian is putting a thumbs down at the moment. Yeah. So it's it's generally quite weak. Does anyone have any sort of idea why it's weak? So like just chuck anything if you have any idea. Doesn't matter. Anything. Okay, so Charlene put lockdown, coronavirus, lack of spending. Yeah, that's a good one. Coronavirus, yeah. That's a good one. I think that's we'll touch on coronavirus. Tourism is locked off, yeah. Virus, yeah. People win, low spending, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of things. It's literally all of those things. And and yeah, it's um I think it's safe to say it's a it's a it's a it's a pretty much a mess at the moment. So if we take a country like Italy, for example, um if any does if anyone did doesn't know that Italy is one of the big three economies that basically underpins the eurozone now if anyone didn't know they've actually been in a bit of trouble for the past couple of years now so they've got about three trillion um euros worth of debt at the moment um on top of that they've got a really low productivity growth um that's because they haven't been investing in new technology uh the labor force is shrinking um they've got they're known to have a lot of corruption in their government and on top of that you know the their, their, their rigid labor market rules make companies afraid to hire people so they can't get rid of them later. So there was a lot of problems before before um, the coronavirus hit. Now that the coronavirus is hit, it's impacted a lot of things. So it's impacted, so someone mentioned um, the, the tourism, you know, people aren't traveling to these certain places. Uh, so another person mentioned the lockdown as well. Exactly, I think um, they've locked down Milan. Now, if anyone didn't know, Milan is actually the financial hub of Italy. Now, if you're locking down that that particular area, of course, and it, and keep in mind it's the financial hub of the of the entire country, of course, it's going to affect the markets in a very big way. Um, coming back to what I mentioned before, obviously the productivity is low. When productivity is low, what tends to happen is companies aren't making enough money. If companies are not making enough money, they're not generating enough revenue. They they can't. That's not um, that basically decreases the economy. Um, all of these things adds up. And obviously that with the coronavirus as well, and we, we know that it's going to be a very long time uh, before, you know, the lockdowns are going to be, you know, reversed. You know, the, the economy is just going to start to shrink. Um, I know Brian, you mentioned before that, you know, GDP growth, you know, that obviously that um, basically gives you an idea of like how well the economy is doing. Now, if you want to jot this down for your own, um, for your own time, um, I think Italy's uh GDP growth last quarter was like really low. I think it was around like negative zero point zero point one percent. So and what and touching on what Brian mentioned before, you need two quarters consecutively to of negative um, growth in the economy to equal a recession. So and judging for with how Italy has reacted to the coronavirus, it seems that the next quarter is going to be um, it's going to be negative growth again. So it's it's likely that that the Italy is going to go into a recession and then if that country if that particular country goes into a recession then it's going to be it's going to I I personally believe it's going to be very bad for the euro so we can't expect it to 
uh, come up anytime soon. So these are the sort of things you need to have in the back of your mind when you are, you know, taking these particular trades. So say, for example, if you're going to take a, a Euro GBP trade, like knowing what you know now, knowing that what I've told, what I've um, spoke about with you, and knowing what you've seen on trading economics, you can make, you can, you can have in the back of your mind, like, okay, knowing what I know now, I feel that it's best to, you know, go in for a sell rather than go for a buy at the moment because there's so many things going on at the moment. There's so many, you know, uh, countries that are on lockdown. There's so many countries that are, you know, whose um, uh, productivity, whose economies are taking a negative hit to it. So you need to come with an investor mindset and think, okay, with all that's going on, why would I want to buy the euro at this present time? Um, does that make sense to everyone? No. If it, if it doesn't, you know, just drop a question in the chat box. I'm more than happy to go through all of that again. Yes. Okay, brilliant. So what I just wanted to do as well, um, I was gonna, before I hand it over to Ben, I'm just gonna go over some other um, great sources of information that, um, that are related to, the econ related to the economic side. So obviously I've given you trading economics as one. There's also a newsletter I re I've been regularly using, it's called Macrodesiac. So, this guy, he, he trades as well. He trades um, using macroeconomics. So basically everything that I've explained to you, he uses that and uses that to construct trade ideas for long term. Um, you, do have to, you do have to do a uh, pay monthly. Um, they, he gives you a free trial for about th for 30 days. Um, I've been using it since the start of March and I have, I have to say I've been really impressed with it so far. And I'm definitely going to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, doing the regular payments, you know, when, once it starts. So I really want to like just plug that into everyone. If you haven't got it, just take that down, macrodesiac.com. Um, this is basically, basically the introduction. So it gives you content. So he will send you an email three to four times per week. And he'll basically give you the lowdown of like the coronavirus. Pretty much recently he's been giving you the update on the coronavirus and how it's been affecting the global economy. And some, and he will actually give you like trade ideas from it as well. So I've actually taken one. So ADJPY and Euro CHF are one or two pairs that he's been selling at the moment. Um, obviously, I've, I've mentioned, to you, mentioned to you about the Euro. He's talked about it in more detail. But also because um, Australia at the moment is literally on the brink of a recession. So he's been selling and selling and selling. I think he's been selling since 2017. So yeah, he's not expecting it to come up anytime soon. So that's him. Uh, he's on they're on trust pilot as well so you can check out the reviews these are this is the pricing so obviously 39 pound a month um to me i think i think it's worth it you know take that think of that 39 pound a month as, as an investment you know you're investing in gaining more knowledge in the market which is going to help make you profitable in the long term so yeah i definitely if you're going to spend 40 pound on something i definitely um, recommend you um, subscribe to this newsletter so yeah hopefully um, I hope that's all made sense. Um, if you do have any other questions um, for me regarding obviously like the effects of coronavirus or the economy, just feel free to you know drop me a message. I'll be more than happy to um, you know just to help out and just you know answer any questions you got. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to hand it over to Ben. I'm just going to quickly make him the host. Just one second, and he's going to quickly touch upon. Um, make um, me the host, Pem. I'll make you guys okay. The one that's talking now because Des is also logged in. Okay, cool. Thank you. No problem. Perfect. There you go. All well, good. Thank you, Pem. Guys, can we just show Pemmy some love in the chat box? Um, that was absolutely powerful. Like I said, he headlines the economics on the trading floor. Um, so he knows his stuff. Those news um, articles that he's showing you, honestly, has changed the game. So let's show him a lot of love in the chat box. Thank you, Pem. Right, I'm going to hand it over to the goat, Ben. <laughs> I just want to say, first, I just want to say thank you for um, opening my eyes, Pemmy, to like fundamentals. Because all I really did was just mostly technical analysis. Um, shall I mute Naya? Yeah. 
All right, so what I wanted to go over was literally how you can use this knowledge on the charts. So Pemi's told you about where you can go and find the knowledge, certain things that happen right now with the euro. Brian has told you about GDP. And I'm just going to go over the charts and show you how you can actually apply this knowledge onto the charts. So I'm just going to go over some safe haven currencies. So safe haven assets. A safe haven asset is a financial instrument that is expected to retain or even gain value during a period of economic downturn. So obviously we're in the, the period of um, the coronavirus right now. And we see that happened around, I believe, the start of the year. The first few cases of coronavirus came out around um, the beginning of January. So if we look on gold, if we can see down here, some of the safe havens include the metals, gold and silver, the Japanese yen, Swiss franc and government bonds. I'm going to go through these in more detail in a minute. But um, if we just look here, basic on the chart, this is the daily chart, by the way. And we find around the start of January, which is around this area right here, yeah? Let me just grab a box. So from the beginning of January, gold has risen this entire, entire amount, which is roughly, let me check. That's like, wow, <laughs> that's about 17, no, that's 1,700 pips, which is 11%, which is crazy amounts. So basically the reason for this is because investors are, get, are gaining less confidence in countries' um, currencies. So, for example, you see how Pemi was talking about how Italy, they're um, in a real crisis right now with their bank shares are falling, there's corruption in the government, the entire um, city is on, of Milan is on um, lockdown. I think the entire country is actually on, on lockdown. So um, investors are taking their money out of the euro and they're putting money into gold. That essentially was the reason why gold was rising because investors have added confidence in gold rather than the currencies. And then I just want to talk a little bit about this fall off in the, the recent days as well. So if I bring it down to the four hours. So you can see in, in the recent few, few days and um, since the end of last week really, we started to see this, this little fall off the decline of, um, of gold. The reason for this is because investors started to regain confidence in currencies and take their money out of gold due to the fact that governments were increasing their spending. So they did a system called quantitative easing, which essentially is printing more money and, and pumping more money into the economy. So with them pumping more money into the economy, investors had more confidence in the currencies and they took their money out of gold and put it back into the currencies. So this is why we see this drop. Um, some of the other uh, safe haven currencies, I'll just go over that now. So silver is essentially the same as gold. It's, a, it's another um, metal that, that um, investors put their money into. The Japanese yen. So the Japanese yen became a safe haven when the US dollar started dropping. So essentially when the US dollar was going down, loads of people flocked to put their money into the Japanese yen. I can show you this on a chart um, recently. So obviously um, Trump announced that the, the US was in like a, a critical phase or, or something along the lines of that about um, the coronavirus pandemic. So let me just change to the daily. And you can literally see 
how the US fell so rapidly against the Japanese yen. Price just started. So from what day is this? From the 20th of February, when like the, the coronavirus cases started really ramping up, you just see this major, major fall off of the US dollar compared to the yen. So people flocked to put their, their money in the yen. And then the other one um, was obviously the Swiss franc. The reason uh, people flocked to put money in the Swiss franc is because it's not part of the, the EU, like the Eurozone. And um, it's like a neutral ground, as so to speak, to, for people to put their, their money in. Um, one more thing that I wanted to talk about was that we what I, before I used to just do pure technical analysis and not really worry too heavily on the fundamentals. But um, last week, like me and Pemi really sat together and went over both and put both together. So I just wanted to go over an example of what that looked like. So if I just bring up Euro USD. Euro USD, USD. Let me see on the side here, bro. Oh, I see. So for Euro USD, um, the beginning of last week, this is where we had price up here, right at the top. And we could have, I think, towards the end of the week, we started seeing a, a small decline, right? So knowing that price has pushed up so heavily for two weeks off a, um, an accumulation phase down here, it's pushed up, it's so overextended and left. This is just some technicals, by the way. It's left a lot of insufficient price action in here. There's a slippage here, more insufficient price action in here. And there's a big gap right here. So knowing this, um, I know that, that eventually it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when price is going to come back down to these areas. So sitting down with Pemi, going over the stuff about Italy, the Eurozone, how Spain, Italy on a lockdown, the bank and all that stuff, our original bias before looking at technical analysis was that the euro was going to be sold off. Obviously, with EURUSD, you can look at the DXY to correlate with, um, like, so they're, they're basically run opposite to each other. So if EURUSD is going up, DXY is going down. But um, without that, literally, our first bias was that euro is going to be bearish within the near future. Knowing that, we just put it together with a few technicals. And we managed to literally catch this entire move down. This entire move from up here all the way down last week. But I'm not going to get um, just too into the technicals. So literally, my advice to you would be to use the fundamentals as like a, a part of your trading plan. So switch up your, your trading plan, what you have right now, because the markets are really, really pushed by the fundamentals. Start off going on trading economics, write down your, your biases, your plan, and then mix it in with um, the technicals. And you're going to have a really, really good plan and setups for the week. Is there anything else that you want to add? Well, I'd like to thank everyone for jumping on the Zoom. Um, and is there any questions for, for me about anything that I went over? For example, if JPY is stronger than the GBP, do you buy or sell the JPY? And say, for example, if you have the JPY, which one would you sell or would you look for another pair? See, uh, as I, um, good, that's a very good question. So basically, you see how, how I was talking about from the start of the day, you, you um, create your, your bias, as so to speak. So um, an example would be, an example would be if um, the interest news for GDP was coming up, and I knew that is huge, huge news for um, the pound coming up. 
and then I expected them to, to slash the interest rates, I'm expecting a short fall in, in the pound, then I would understand that that fall is going to be a, a lot more tragic than any um, JPY news for the week. But it also depends on the technicals as well. So I'd say have a look at your technicals and if they marry up with your fundamentals, then you know whether to buy or sell. Is there any other questions? If the GPP drops, what should you buy it? So I think people don't get the currencies running that way. That's Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. so um, and just to, to go over what Bryony just said as well, um, talking about if, if JPY is stronger than the pound, then GP, JPY, you're going to sell GP, JPY because essentially the currency on the right is going to be stronger. Like the current JPY is going to be stronger than GBP. So you're going to sell GP, JPY. All right, mm -hmm. sweet. So if the first currency is stronger, you'd buy. If the first currency is weaker, you'd sell. Uh, that's all good. Guys, can we give some love to Ben in the chat box for that section, please? Um, I was even sitting there taking notes. So guys, um, let's really give some love to Ben um, as he ended up the segment. Thank you, guys. Um, guys, we hope that was helpful. Um, we will try to do it as regularly as we can. Um, so we will be looking at a part two. But yeah, guys, as Ben said, just make sure that you implement this in all your tr um, trading plans because in the current climate, it's really important and it can outweigh technical analysis. So make sure that, guys, you update your trading journals and just use it. Any questions, let us know. And yeah, part two coming soon. Take care, guys. We're going to get out of here. Um, have a great evening. Um, those of you that are unwell, especially Des, wish you better. Um, and, yeah, take care. See you later, guys. Thank you, guys.